So in the last video, we saw that by recording our notes in real time, uh, we're able to play it more like, you know, we're actually playing an instrument. Uh, but we can see that some of these notes were not properly quantized. And because of that, our beat sounds a little bit sloppy. Now we can always quantize the notes after the fact, but there's other ways to enter notes inside of a clip. And one of the main benefits of drawing the notes directly in the clip is that they snap to the lines in the beat grid. Now you can always adjust this later, but this is very helpful. So I'm gonna keep this clip here. We're gonna revisit this a little bit later, but let me go ahead and create another blank clip right below it. There we go, double click, blank MIDI clip there. And let me go ahead and play this clip now. Okay, so just like when we brought in the analog instrument before we were able to see a piano roll here on the side, and with this blue headphone button on, we can preview the sounds when we click on this piano roll. Now the main difference here is that we're not seeing every single note on the piano, we're just seeing the sounds that are inside of our drum rack. And we can look at the horizontal line and basically place that drum sound in a specific part in our beat grid. Now at this point, what I think I wanna do is, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for you know a, a pretty typical sort of broken style beat. So when I'm talking about a broken beat style, and we're gonna talk about this in more detail pretty soon, but we're talking about a beat where the kick drum pattern is not happening every single quarter note. So instead of going for a doop, 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 doop kind of a sound, again, something you would associate with techno, uh, trance, and a lot of different house styles, not all of them, but a lot of different house styles. Instead of doing something like that, I wanna create a kick drum pattern where the kick doesn't always fall directly on a quarter note. First thing I wanna do is basically place my snare. If I turn my metronome back on, we're at 120 BPM, that's the default tempo. And if I wanna make a beat that feels like it's 120 BPM, I would place my snare on the second beat and the fourth beat of the bar. Generally, when you're working in music that's in a 4-4 time signature, which is what most uh, modern pop music, electronic music is done in, four beats per bar, your snare usually is gonna happen twice per bar and on the second and fourth beat. Now again, for different styles, there's different rules. We'll talk about that. But right now, let me go ahead and just double click and I'm gonna place my snare on the second beat and the fourth beat. One, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So we got that going on. Now, let me turn the metronome off. And as you notice, I double click to place these notes in here because I'm not using the draw mode right now. We can see that my mouse icon is still here. I'm gonna press B to switch to the draw mode. And now all I have to do is just simply click once and I can put these notes inside the clip. Now, if I was going for more of a broken style beat, I wanna make sure that not every single kick drum falls directly on the quarter notes. So that would be one, 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 and 1 1.4. What happens if I place a kick drum on every single quarter note? Well, let's see. So you end up with a beat that's very, very straight. And again, that's not really what I'm going for right now. So when I'm talking about making more of a broken beat, let's say this kick that fell on the second beat of the bar. Right now, the grid we're looking at with our clip, if we look in the lower right-hand side, each line represents a 16th note. So, Maybe this kick that's falling on the second beat, what if I move it one sixteenth note earlier? This kick has been selected, so if I just use my arrow keys and move it to the left, just like that, the beat sounds a little bit more broken. Okay, we're adding some syncopation, the rhythm isn't so straight. Let's take this last kick here, and I'll go ahead and switch back to my regular mouse pointer by hitting B. Select that, and then maybe I'll make this hit a 16th note later. So just like that, now we have more of a broken sounding beat and not a uh, beat that sounds so straight. Now, another thing we can do here, all right, I have my hi-hats. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some hi-hats here, but I'm gonna approach this a little bit differently. I'm gonna go ahead and create a hi-hat here on the first beat of the bar. And if I look at the velocity, the velocity of that hi-hat here, it's 100. Now I'm gonna create another hi-hat here, and this hi-hat's gonna be a little bit lower in velocity. So not a full 100, maybe about 75. 74, close enough. 
I'm now gonna put a hi-hat before that one that's gonna be even lower in velocity. And I'll place one here that's about the same velocity as the second one. So we talked about velocity in the last video and how we can accent the beat. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a hi-hat pattern where there's gonna be a hi-hat that plays every 16th note. So basically every slot in this clip is gonna have a hi-hat, but they're gonna play at different velocities. The hi-hat that plays on the beat is going to be the most heavily accented. Then the next one is gonna be significantly quieter in velocity. The third one is gonna be almost as loud as the first. And then the last one is also gonna be lower in velocity. So when you hear this pattern, extended for the entire clip, the hi-hat is not gonna sound so repetitive necessarily. So we're hearing a bit more velocity uh, variation on that hi-hat pattern. Now, since we're still on the subject of velocity, let me go ahead and switch to the device view. I'm gonna hit my tab here. And we're messing with the hi-hat. The stronger the velocity sensitivity, the more that hi-hat's volume is gonna to react to changes in velocity. So let's play the clip again. And let's play with the velocity sensitivity. Let's increase this. And now we can hear a much bigger difference between the louder velocity hi-hats and the quieter ones. We're using the velocity to accent certain hi-hats that are playing in the clip. Now if we reduce this, now everything's exactly the same velocity, the same volume, and it's kind of sucked the life out of our beat. So let's go ahead and increase this. Nice. Now you can always combine recording in real time with drawing notes inside of a clip, but it's always a good idea to just have a, a nice approach for both methods. One thing that's really nice here too, uh, something that I learned from a former student of mine, individual notes uh, can be multiplied by two or divided by two. So for instance, I've selected this note here, and if I look in the MIDI clip preferences, uh, properties I should say, we have divide by two and we have multiply by two. Now, if I divide one note by two, it's not gonna affect the other notes around it. So let me take this hi-hat and I'm gonna divide it by two. All right, now that I've done that, I could actually duplicate this hi-hat by using Command D and it places it right after uh, the hi-hat that I just have the length of. This can be cool to create more kind of trap style hi-hat patterns or add a lot more variation where instead of just having 16th notes, maybe there's a part where 32nd notes start playing. So let's hear how this sounds. So let's try this in a few more places. Maybe we'll take this one here. We'll divide that by two. Command D to duplicate. And we'll do the same thing with the one before it. Have it by two, duplicate. And then by also uh, already having that velocity variation there, not only are we able to kind of switch up the way the notes are being quantized or how often they're being played, but the velocity variation makes it so that, again, it just doesn't sound so static or so stiff.